it's the sixth day of December. We got a fire in the fireplace. It's about 12 degrees outside actual temperature and wind chill about four below. It's cold. Now, we're going to go hunt. With those kind of temperatures outdoors, it's going to really be hard to hunt in a tree stand unless you're prepared. Now this can be for gun or archery. Uh, doesn't make any difference if you're a post-up hunter, you're going to need to be warm. And in today's world, there's no excuse if you should get cold. Preparation will keep you in the woods longer. Hopefully, that will enable you to score on the harvest of an animal. But there's no excuse for cold hands, cold feet, or cold anything today in today's modern technology. I'm going to share with you a few tips that I use, and I hope maybe they'll shed some light and maybe keep you on stand a little bit longer. Well, number one, what you're going to have to do, it all starts at the base layer, your long underwear. This under armor, there are several good undergarments out there. Tops and bottoms are a must. That's what starts your basic foundation. If you don't have a good foundation in your house, all you're going to end up with is a undesirable shack. Foundation is everything. Build on it. Under armor or any top of the line polypropylene type wear. Do not use cotton. That's a given. This, if it gets wet through perspiration, is going to soak it away from you and keep you drier. And dryer is going to make sure you stay warm. Okay, after you go with your base layer, your long underwear, you're going to need your next layer. And go with 100% wool. These here wool sweaters, they have a liner in them called windbreaker. It also breaks the wind, helps any wind moving from stealing your heat away. And uh, that's usually the culprit right now with these winds, wind chills, is you can sustain the cold weather at a given temperature, but with the wind, it's always eating at your protection. And it'll eventually uh, bring you down to that temperature because it just keeps gnawing at you. Wool with a liner in it, plus these wool bibs. I really like these wool bibs. They're super because, as you see, they're 100% wool. And if you're allergic to wool, find something, fleece or something. But you cannot beat wool. It actually generates heat. If it does get wet, it will actually generate a small amount of heat. It's heavy, but, you know, this is what God gave the animals to wear. And uh, so it does the job. Now that we've got this, our, we've got a base layer on, plus we've got an over layer. And, and the more air space you, you can make, make sure these clothes are a little bulky. Don't have them skin tight. Air space will conserve heat. And it gives it a, you know, just a, not, you don't want something skin tight. That's not going to help you at all. So a little bulk on your arms, a little bulk in your pants, that, that's a good thing. Uh, um, that'll actually help you stay warmer. Okay, the next biggest problem we're going to go from is your feet. And that's where a lot of people fall down tremendously is your extremities, your hands and your feet, your head, stuff like that are your extremities. And you've got to keep these warm. And here's a little trick how I keep them warm. Okay, this is real critical. This is what will drive most people back into the cabin or the hunt's over. Is your feet. Alright. Buy these hand warmers, body warmers, by the 18 hour kind. The, the other ones that I found on the market, even though they're made by the same product, or people, are in, they just don't do the job. The 18 hour one is the one you want. That's going to give you the maximum comfort for the money. Uh, if you can stay on stand that much longer, your success may just be that much greater. But uh, the thing we're going to do with those is, what I'm going to do, is i got a little roll of tape here, and uh, what you want to do, take one of your little packets, put it on top of your foot, wrap it one time around there, bow, that's on. That's on top of your foot. Don't put it on the bottom because you've got to walk on the bottom. Have a wool sock on, one wool sock, that taped on. Then bring your second wool sock over that. And believe you me, 
you'll feel that up in the, up in your stand. It, it's tremendous warmth that you're generating, uh, and it, it, it from the top it heats all, all the way around. Okay, that is a really 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 good item to have. Uh, don't worry about cost. Cost of getting down. If you guys are on a you know only a weekend hunter, you need all the time you can spend. And like I say, this is really simple. And this far outweighs anything I found on the market. Yankee Ingenuity. Put that on. Make sure you put it on top. Don't put it on the bottom. You wear a hole in it. And that, that's not good. It'll just be wore out. Keep in mind, you're not going to be walking a long ways. You're going to be standing a lot more than you're walking. So uh, just put your wool sock on. And that'll be ready. Good to go. Also, while we're on your feet, while we're trying to keep your feet warm, cut you out an old piece of carpet. Now, naturally, you're not going to wear this. This is an accessory for your tree stand. A lot of guys, most of them are metal now. I still have a few wood ones that I made, which are really dynamite in cold temperature because metal is going to conduct the cold right into your feet. Put this underneath your feet on top of your stand. It'll save you a lot, a lot of discomfort. So, another piece of old carpet. Keep your feet warm. That is a must. The essential part of the whole system, once you've got your foot wrapped and got your wool socks on, is your pack boot. These boot boots come from Sorrel. They have two bottom insoles, a nice a frost breaker, and a soft cushion one. Put those in. Make sure your boots are dry. Every night when you're done with them, buy a pair of boot dryers. That's essential. They won't hurt the boot. They dry out that moisture. Then you come in with your heavy felt liner. These are, this is the whole trick to this. Now you've got completely dry footwear and that's where a lot of guys fall down. They'll take their boots, they won't dry them out and that moisture builds up in there and then when they put them back on they go out there basically with a wet foot and then when you get that moisture or that temperature on there it doesn't take long. Now keep in mind you're not going to be walking a day hike in these and these boots. They're too big and they're too heavy. But you're not that's not what you're doing anyway. You're going to post up whether it be in a ground blind or on a stand. If you get them on there and you're gonna have your nice boot on there. Uh, they're a little bit heavy. This is giving me a little little time getting that liner back down in there. But you gotta pull them out and make sure that you get those absolutely dry because that's why a guy says well yesterday my feet were warm I stayed on stand longer now I froze my feet off and basically it's because you went to the field in a wet diaper so uh, get your boots in and they're really they're going to be on the heavy side they're not for hiking they're for posting up once you get those on your feet with those hand warmers in there you're set good to go. You, you can stay out there for a long, 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 long time. I can stay on the stand as long as anybody with this kind of setup. Okay, let's move on to our, our basically our outer layer. Now, uh, now that I'm to the stage of putting my outer layer on, as a non-typical nerd walk-in, I always have a, a new trick, thanks to Deb, my seamstress, and my wife. Uh, she, do, she does a lot of this thinking for me. Okay, she made this little vest. We put pockets in it. Take these 18 hour hand warmers. Take out the old one. Put one in there. These go in right where your kidneys are. And this is a lifesaver. I mean, this puts you on stand, whether it be in a blind or what, up, up in 20 mile an hour winds. Put two of those around your kidneys, then you come, come around, you got a couple chest pockets, put a couple in there. Yeah, some of you are going to say, well those, I got about two bucks in each one of these. So you got two, four, you got eight bucks, you got two in your foot, you got ten bucks. Uh, and I'm going to have two, two in my um, vest. So yeah, I'm going to have about ten or twelve bucks worth of uh, heat 
Well, comfort costs money, friends. So air conditioning, your furnace at home, this is your furnace out in the woods. So I'd rather spend a little extra money. Uh, a couple beers at the beer joint would pay you for that, uh, for what you're going to have on the stand that you can make to stay longer. Just a nice little polar fleece vest that goes on. And you can put this on under the vest if you want to. And uh, that's probably what I'll do. But and you can see now you got your heat up here and you got them in the back. That's going to keep your kid. That's going to keep your kidneys warm and your chest warm. And because keep in mind you're combating that wind because it's trying to steal the heat away. So you have to have a way of generating it. Now I have my vest on, and you notice I leave the sleeves off. I don't want to build a whole lot of bulk up on my arms because when I put my goose down on, it's really going to be bulky. So I don't want to keep as low amount of material on my arms because I got to draw and shoot my bow. Another tip, wear your suspenders or your bibs. When you put a belt around your waist, what that's doing is it's constricting the circulation. You don't want any constrictive circulation. That way bibs let that heat and that blood flow as much unrestricted as you can. Well if you put a belt on, pull it up tight to keep your pants up, you're cutting off circulation not to the extent of discomfort, but it does have an effect on your heating capacity of blood flowing. So if you go with bibs, you also got a vest, actually another little half vest up here where you wouldn't have with just a pair of jeans or trousers. So I like wool um, bib uh, overalls and they really do the trick because you got two things. You got an extra garment right here, plus you're not restricting your waistline with a belt. So just another little tidbit. Okay, moving right along. This is the icebreaker. This is your out protection. These are heavy, even though they're they're um, goose down. They're they're light, but yet they are heavy. And but there again, you have a lot a lot of dead airspace, just like the insulation in your in your roof. That's what you're creating. But these are bulky. So, but they do do the trick. So you have to give up something. And keep in mind, you're not going to walk a long ways in these clothes. So if you have to get dressed closer to your stand, that's fine. Or just walk slower and start earlier and try not to build up a sweat. And, uh, we'll talk about that issue in just a second. So, goose down is the way to go. Now, if you get these wet, you're going to have a problem. But it's not raining out today. I'm, I'm trying to combat the cold, not the rain. I had actually, you know, sort of prefer the rain over the cold because I can keep dry. But I have to put on a lot, a lot of layers to keep warm. So that when you get these on, you really got you really got the protection from the elements, and uh, and they're not all that heavy per se, but they're heavier than what clothes you've probably been wearing for the last month or two. There again, now I got the bulk on my arms. Had I would have kept bulking up on my arms. By the time I put these on, they would have been really bulky. That's why I put those little vests underneath of there to keep your core area warm, keep the heat in around your kidneys and your chest area. That's where your blood is flown from your heart. You want that area as warm as you can get it so it'll move warm blood throughout your body down to your extremities. All right, let's see. We got that done. Okay, we got our boots and we're dressed. There's a couple more secrets I'm going to show you that really put the heat in its own, you know, it, it's just amazing what you can do. There's no reason on this earth to be cold today. Yeah, a little tip about your footwear. You can pull these down real tight. Pull them down tight, snug them down real tight when you go into the blind or to the stand. And pull everything in. Pull this top one down, that's going to keep the heat in. Now when you get to the stand, you're going to want to loosen that top string back up and let more air space in there. And that's a nice thing that you don't have to have it as tight because you're not moving around. But while you're walking to the stand, you want to cinch that down pretty tight so you can walk in it because it's an awful bulky boot. But once you get there, take and loosen that up and that'll create more air space and keep your foot that much more warmer. Okay, now that I got my outer layer on, 
basically I could go but if the winds blowing a lot what that's going to do is it's going to blow between your legs and if that wind blows between your legs it's got a, a more biting effect because it's stealing heat between your legs and all around your leg so to enhance to keep that warm air trapped in there we've devised and they sell these commercially I built this here this is what I say bow hunting is a non-stop activity it's a polar fleece blanket and once you get in the stand you got to be a little careful you can't be uh, you know willy-nilly up there you can get dressed in it goes on your feet actually your feet go right through the bottom of it and now you pull it up it's got two suspenders and now you trap all that warm air in there you can get pulled clear up to the top now you, you've got a complete body suit from top to bottom show you a little bit of the bottom down there that goes the entire length of my body go down I can even let it go down above my feet like that I'm standing on a piece of carpet the wind no longer can get between here uh, women knew about that with skirts long skirts that keep the wind from getting through their legs they have a pair of nylons on and a long skirt they're warmer than what most people would think simply because the wind cannot get in there and steal the heat you can do two things you can put your safety harness on now over the top of all this or what I do is I go in my, my safety harness will be underneath this underneath my shield and I will go in on top of that and uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I will uh, I go I've always wore a vest and there again the reason I wear this vest is it, it gives me some more core area and it uh, also make one sure pull your hood up once you get your vest on and get it zipped up you can put two hand warmers one in each pocket this one was from yesterday and it's 24 hours later and it's still got some heat to it that's that 18 hour one put your hands in your pocket you got your vest on you're good to go I've stood out with 25 40 degree wind chill factors sometimes I'm asking myself why but then I'm the non-typical Norwalkian and I just assume you can't kill one sitting in the, on the couch in front of the fire the next and one other item that you want to have with you is you're going to sit down up there have one of these insulated seats foam rubber this is a good quality one there's several out on the market find to find the thickest one might cost you a little more money but when you put this down on one of those metal ladder stands or something you're not putting your buttons down on a piece of cold metal or cold aluminum that will actually conduct the cold and send it right into your body this will ins insulate you you got your carpet underneath your feet insulating you and you got this on your butt insulating you now you got your hands warm you can keep them in your pockets you guys want to shoot bare fingers I shoot fingers so I can keep my hands in there right till the moment of shooting time and if you really want to keep your bow in your hand for a lot lo longer get a nice thin glove don't get a bulky glove unless you practiced with it but uh, get, you may want to put something on your bare hand because that, that gets to biting you that's up to you but if you can put your hands right here in your in your you got two hand warmers in there your hands when you bring them out they're ready to go and uh, anyhow layering wool polypropylene for a foundation lots and lots of hand warmers I know that might be over the top for some of you but I can stay on stand and I can stay on stand a long long time and you can too if you just look at some of this put it on your onboard computer digest it see what you come up with this is the ultimate though this is the windbreaker they sell these suits for a couple hundred bucks or you can make your own I, I'm a kind of person that I would rather invent it on my own and use it and that way I got something personal in it so okay the last item is probably one of the most important items there are it's your head uh, pardon my hairdo been too busy hunting ain't been enough time to go to the barbershop this is the most critical part 
not only got your onboard computer, that's where you'll lose most of your heat. Your head, as it heats up, sweats. So I prefer not to wear a hat to the stand. I've seen guys get to the stand, they take their hat off, they're just full of sweat. That sweat just conduces odor. So the more that you don't use that, a hat going to stand, the better off you are. Now once you get to the stand and you get all set up, that's when you want to go in. Now you want to capture that heat and hold the heat, not the sweat, back in. Uh, you might want a day like today, you can go to head nets and uh, that's good to go. It's really, really cold, you can always put your hood up. Make sure you can pull that down tight. So you can move and you don't have any restriction in your eyes. That's going to keep you warm. If you have a problem with the sun issue, this, this little thing has a little flap on it. You can pull it down, block some of that sun. If not, you might want to take a, a ball cap or something just for the sun. Don't take it for the warmth though. But remember, take these off. When you're walking on the ground, get them off. Because that will let you be more comfortable. There's no use of sweating it all up. And then when that sweat's going to turn cold when you, once you get on stand. So let it evaporate, keep your temperature cool. Once you get on stand, put your head headgear on. Uh, that should keep, about do what I know about keeping warm. It served me now for the last 30 some years of standing on stand. So, and I'm sure it will, uh, you'll get some value out of some of these tips. So without any more of my BS, this is the last night. Let's go bow hunting.